BC-10 is a, a fairly complex project in terms of its subsurface. We have several different fields. In phase one, there's three fields that we're working all together. These three fields are very different from one another, and that, that increases our complexity here. We have Oster, which essentially is the backbone of our, our phase one development. We go from heavy oil at Ostra to very light oil at Abalone. Um, we've got two reservoir deposition environments that are completely different. If we move over to Argonauta complex, um, the B West is in phase one. Uh, and it, again, is, is very, very different. You're, you're in a position where you're even heavier oil uh, in, in an area that doesn't have a lot of um, stratigraphy and a lot of uh, dip incline to the formation. The geology of the Campos Basin is such that you've got mountains right near here, Rio, for example, where they're almost a thousand meters uh, above elevation and where we're drilling is about almost 2,000 meters below sea level. So the sand has basically moved about 150 miles or 200 kilometers from these mountains here all the way offshore and they've traveled into the BC-10 area for you know, tens of millions of years. One of the markers we're using in the BC-10 area is called the, the KT boundary or the Top Cretaceous. This is a, a major event and marker for us in the BC-10 area as it is over most of Brazil and throughout the Atlantic Ocean. This particular event is about 60 to 65 million years old and that's where there was a mass extinction. We think that a number of dinosaurs and animals went extinct at that time or at least a large number of species. And above that zone, as you get younger than say 60 million years old, we get into other sands that we've discovered at our oil field. The sands that we encounter at depth are still fairly uncompacted means they're just a lot like beach sand. So if you consider going out to the, to the beach and then trying to dig a hole in the, the beach sand where the, the waves are coming in, the water's trying to fill that hole in, basically the sand and water basically just sloughs or drops right into the bottom of the hole. What we're trying to do is basically as we drill these holes, we're trying to hold that back. As we uh, go through these, these wells, we have the opportunity to acquire data in terms of uh, putting tools down hole. Uh, accessing things through electrical measurements, through nuclear measurements, actually taking pieces of physical pieces of rock and fluids from the well and actually sending these to labs and, and getting data analysis run on them. One of the great technologies that we're using here at BC10 is the ability to geosteer. Uh, essentially that means being able to reactively move the place the wells in the subsurface. Now the, the way that we're doing that now is using a deep resistivity as muthal reading tool. Uh, what does that do for us? Essentially as we're drilling these wells with standard tools we can only see a couple of inches from the tool into the borehole. With this new tool, this deep reading as muthal resistivity, we can see three to five meters out into the formation. And what that allows us to do is stay within our reservoir with greater ease. So as we see non-reservoir approaching, we can steer away from that and that optimizes the productivity of our wells. And we brought in new technology and we've set ourselves up to succeed. Um, I think that from a subsurface standpoint, being able to deal with that uncertainty is obviously overcoming a challenge.